By the way, if he changes the story, I'm not going to believe him the second time. <laughs> right? Oh, now you're just lying to me. Now, he had now to it's me. just a trap. Yeah, this is this is just a trap to see if he'll take the bait. He's kind of fucked either way, though, really. <laughs>
so far so fingers crossed definitely want to run through a full adventure with these guys been a lot of fun but without going any further i'm going to roll for historian for this session not it <laughs> it will not be you because you were that <laughs> last time we have ondar i feel like I he's will. done it more than anyone i know man <laughs> So like what I'm trying to do is is whoever his is historian I'll erase their name and then put it with uh, uh, whoever's left. So like I, I took away sauerkrauts and I filled it in with Ereva. and it's only a D4. But yeah, that that Ondar has been getting them quite a bit. Well, of averages. <laughs> Eventually, we'll do it more. Eventually, hopefully, maybe. <laughs> it's all good. Hmm, that's weird. To me, it says you're offline on Discord, Freddy. Yeah, that's that's because of my internet. Are you sure? Can you, like, check your settings? Because it's literally showing you offline since you've been in Greece. <laughs> he doesn't want to be bothered. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, but... We hear him, that's all that matters. Yep. <laughs> all right, and so... Andar has taken Historian... Take some good notes. I look forward to reading them for your campaign journal entry. No schmotes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last time on the Tyranny of Dragons run through of the Horde of the Dragon Queen, they were leaving the outskirts of Baldur's Gate on the caravan trail headed north. And uh, almost right away, for Edelry, Andar and Noct noticed the uh, the uh, merchant up above in the caravan just ahead. Um, he was being kind of cruel to his animal, <clears throat> beating it needlessly when it di didn't need to be smacked. So Andar actually went up and uh, talked to the man and kind of made chummy, convincing him somewhat that Edelry had the hots for him. And, but the only reason why she did not say anything was because he was beating his horse so of course the uh, man's like uh yeah i guess you know we're we're we don't need to be going anywhere right now so he stopped and then uh soon after getting further along the trail as dusk was setting everything stopped and they weren't sure what was going on but runners running up and down the caravan trail to inform people informs the group that there was a um, a wagon turned upside down with some figures hiding underneath and uh, they were they were uh, uh, their horses were slain and they were uh, basically fending for their lives against a group of hobgoblins that had them pinned down waiting for the cover of darkness to come in and finish the job thankfully for the the wagon team the noble that was pinned underneath and his guardsmen, Andar and Nox charged forth right away, followed closely by Freddy, Hawkeye, and Ereva, and they made pretty quick work of the Hobgoblins, dispatching them and saving the saving every single one of that team. No thanks to Ereva. <laughs> <laughs> Your presence was all they needed. <laughs> And, uh, the threat of an arrow is just as good as an arrow sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Osborn, the noble, actually went up and said his thanks, gave thanks, and embracing because he knew he was probably dead there. Saved by the heroes, and uh, he he joined them to go back to the caravan. And excuse me, like I said, every time I gotta talk, I gotta burp when I'm on stream. But he came back to the uh, to the caravan and basically gained permission to join Edelry on her wagon to the next hostel where he could buy supplies and more horses and come back. His guards would stay there. And so that was good for them. Edelry showed a, a little bit of annoyance. Um, she seems to be really uptight, like wants to run a very tight ship. She's in charge and she wants you to know it. Um, do what she says you're hired on but nevertheless um, everybody everyone in the caravan kind of took notice to these heroes so so willing to 
put themselves in harm's way for the good of everybody else. And then we came to night, because as they came back, the rest of the caravan had been setting up for camp, fall asleep. And everybody did fall asleep. Freddy, Hawkeye, and Ureva each taking turns on a watch. Hawkeye going first, not really notice any, any, noticing anything, but rodents running around. Um, seems to be a more inhospitable era area. And then, and then it went to Freddy, who noticed halfway through his watch some eagles, or at least some figures, flying overhead. And when he went to stir Ereva awake, he made note of those creatures to Ereva, who actually saw them, or she didn't actually see them. She took notice, but didn't take too close of a look because. They were able to sweep down low enough to dive bomb on top. It turned out to be two peritons. And if you don't know what peritons are, they are a monstrous type of creature. Basically, um, eagles or hawks with the head of a stag with some nasty pointing teeth. So they have like antlers and shit. They eat hearts. So they rip your heart out of you and consume your heart. Nasty things. So. <clears throat> the party quickly. They're all female. Up. Are they? Yeah. Wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important wow. note. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Sam Kennison. He'll tell you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Nobody's going to get that. <laughs> so they, uh, they swooped down and uh, started fighting. The heroes woke up quickly with Noct and Ondar, or actually Noct hearing the commotion to wake him up from further up in the caravan, and he actually stirred Ondar awake. Head mouse in charge? I don't get the reference. <laughs> but anyway, so Noct actually stirred Ondar. Ondar, right away, his, uh, his, senses, his senses coming in, and his insight knowing, hey, loud noises, danger. So he gets up and uh, Noct follows him, to Freddy, Hawkeye, and Otto's position where Noct saw the birds and Ondar was just kind of standing there in his skivvies like, I hear something, I don't know what's going on because he can't see in the dark. They made quick work of the Peritons and the rest of the camp seems to have taken notice as now we enter back into where we left off. <clears throat> And you are all standing here just victorious, the bodies of the Peritons littering the ground, the two of them. Samardag the Hoper is up to your northeast. Edelry and Bade Seshpole enter the scene, running. And then some figures from the south come up as well. A confident looking woman and a curious halfling with a longer nose than what would seem normal, and they all make their way closer to you. <sighs> oh, oh my! Oh, that was a close one! Uh, on the, you might want to put Tom away, we got guests. I do not know what you mean, my friend. I. I, I... You're not wearing pants, Fred. Have my breeches. <laughs> <laughs> I do not call it oh torn, by the way. It's, it's... <laughs> I was wondering if that's what you were getting at, but I thought maybe you meant his shield. <laughs> Jesus. This is not the first time he's had to see Ondar naked in the middle of the night. It's just... I'm not naked. Hey, if, 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 if there's something to worship, that might be it. <laughs> it is worthy. It is worthy of worship, Oh, yeah. this is going downhill fast. <laughs> I don't think Ed will really be too mad. Hawkeye. Okay. Ali walks away. <laughs> what is this creature before us? I've... I've... I say, I'm... I'm on, like crouched down, like kind of examining it. <sighs> Never seen such a thing before. Oops. You have one. Oh, you're talking about the dead thing. 
That's correct. <laughs> oh I couldn't help God. myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have one too. <laughs> All right, the confident woman actually does carry a torch with her. Thankfully, someone has brought light. So, Ondar, you see on the ground over here by Freddy, there is... Pull it up. (laughs) You see one of these on the ground. That is foul. Of some sort, right? Yes. That's right, yes. It is a bird. It not only has a beak, but it's also got teeth inside of the beak. That is... <laughs> that is frightening. <laughs> that is most definitely evil of some sort. Wow. Way to judge a book by its cover. <laughs> well, they could, they could be sweet, innocent creatures and wouldn't even know. I mean, Andar will, will they extend. try to eat us. Andar will, uh, will, will open his senses to uh, uh, sense evil. All right. Drake Takes is giving you inspiration, Andar, for your joke. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this halfling comes up and... Uh, Kind of seeming like with, um, without realizing, like, proper etiquette or whatever, or, uh, acting like he, he, he knows, knows the place all too well, way too familiar. Walks up to the, uh, to the, uh, Periton and, and, like, lifts it up and looks at it and everything. Oh, my! Oh, you must be some sort of, sort of, uh, a, a great adventurer! And he look, he's looking at you, Freddy. He's like, you took this down? Oh, my. Yes, I am a great adventurer, but I did not do it without assistance. I gestured to my uh, compatriots beside me here. It wasn't I, it was... Uh... That would be me. Yes. And who are you, friend? Oh, uh, Me? Uh, yeah, call me, yeah. call me Lovious. Obvious. Lovious. Lovious <laughs> long nose, they call me. Oh, obvious long nose. Okay. Lovious. <laughs> Lovious. Yeah, that's there right. That's go. right. Uh, who might you be? I am Andar Stillhawk. This oh, is well, Freddy, man. the Great Bard. Well met, well met. He uh, goes to shake everybody's hand really quickly. Then the confident woman strides up. She takes a look at the paratons and then she she looks at the party and she has a uh, approving look on her on her face, like a, a slight smile. Though she is pretty well maintained, um, good posture and everything, military. She nods her head, she says, Well, seems like we got a few, uh, a few protectors in, in the caravan. Might you be one of them? Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm actually Lovius's, um, god here. Do you have a name? My name is Leda. Leda Weedris. Well met. Greetings. Likewise. I think we I'll definitely, shake your hand. He shakes your hand back. Um, I think we'll have an easy time on this caravan. Two peritons in the night. Nobody dies. Mm, quick, well, quick on your feet. I think they just chose the wrong t- targets, but perhaps we can be that lucky in the future. Never say easy when it comes to caravan guarding. True, true enough. Glad to have you with, though. And you, as well. And then Lovius is, uh, has walked over and he's, uh, looking at your stuff, Andar. He sees your shield and he's like, Oh my, that's a big shield you got right there. What's that on the front? It's the Hand of Torm. 
Ah, oh, okay, so you're a paladin of time? Don't know if you could call me a paladin as of yet, but I am a true believer of the true God, yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I don't worship Tom myself, but, you know, anyone that worships one of the goodly, goodly kind, that's, that's all right with me. Do you follow a deity? I do, I do. Who might that be? Me, myself, I follow Avondra. I'm sorry? Avondra. Don't believe I've ever heard of this deity. Avondra's in the... in favor, right? I don't know. Or who? Don't think so. Goddess of freedom? Yeah, I just want to make sure she's actually in the current um, iteration. Pretty sure she is. Yeah, she's on 5e. You haven't heard of Vivandra, the Lady of Luck? The Lady of Luck. Oh yes, Vondra, the goddess of change. Lightning in freedom, trade, travel, adventure, and the frontier. She gives luck to those who uh, who pay her enough to respect. Us halflings, we're we're very good for that. If you say so, I'm sure that if you worship her, she must be a good god, yes? Or goddess. Oh yeah, she's she's one of the good ones. And then he uh, kind of returns back to the Periton. He's he's looking at it with with a lot of interest. He's kind of rummaging through. Edelry comes up, and then she places a hand on on you, Noct. What's going on? Um. Uh, yeah. I not much. Some of these, uh, and I kind of kick the Periton corpse. Some of these came down and... Well, we decided to pitch in. And almost like with a scoff, um... She, she, uh, she looks through the corner of her, of her eyes to you, Nox, just giving you a quick glance. Well, earning your keeper, at least. And then uh, takes a takes one look around to see the paratons and everybody else, and then turns around. She says, "Well, get back to get back to sleep. You gotta wake up early." Uh, it would be because we were in like sixth watch, so it's after midnight, probably. Yeah, it's it's uh probably like two ish, something like five that. or maybe six hours in, because Ereva has gotten. Her rest. She only needs to rest for four hours. All the rest. Everybody else has to complete their rest. Yeah, I don't see any reason to continue being up at this point. So, yeah, he would head back, I think. Right. <clears throat> As you are heading back... Um, Samardag is also around, and he's just kind of rejo rejoicing in the fact that he hired the group that is defending so well. Ah, yes, you chose well. Good eye. Oh, thanks, Freddy. Okay. Okay. Uh, with that, then Freddy will take the uh, the periton and just like drag it away from the camp. Don't want it like fouling up the the camp at night. All right. Comes back, grabs the other one, drags it. Wait, up. before you take the other one, I want a talon. <laughs> you you want a what? Talon. Talon. Ah, well, yeah, go ahead. All right, make me a nature check. Actually, that's a good point. Is there anything of value on peritons? 
see. Uh, oops. You could definitely. Sorry, I was uh, it over. You could definitely take a few things as like a a trophy to display like your capability. As for anything like uh, like alchemical reagents or uh, magical components, not really. They have the antlers okay. that everybody would know, like a periton antler. So different I'll than. I'll take one of those too. Then I would say, is right. that something like a trophy that people would want to buy at any point, or probably not buy because it doesn't really have um, a. Any use. It doesn't really have any use besides like um, telling of your prowess Got as a it. warrior, and they look kind of cool. So someone might like adorn them over their hunting lodge or something. Mm -hmm. They definitely are to be feared. All right, Hawkeye, you are able to... Uh, turn talent. You are able to um, take a, a knife and kind of work it around um, the foot of the periton and, and you are able to extract a talon. If you want the antler... Can I go ahead, yep, go ahead and make me another oh. nature check. Okay, that, that was my question. Oh, yes. You're, you're working around this one. This is a little bit more difficult with the antlers. Um, but after, after a few minutes of uh, sawing at the head and uh, trying to separate one of the antlers, um, you just crack it and then hack it, separating it from the skull, and you are able to get an antler. It is different than regular deer or any other equine um, antlers in that it is uh, sharper and more jagged and uh, kind of reminds you of more of dead wood than a living, a living creature's antler. Mmm, that's cute. <laughs> Got those on your character sheet. And Samardag says, Huh, oh, well, you guys, you guys want to come, come to camp? I actually made, made you some tents. Goes over here. And Lovius is uh, watching... You guys disperse. Nocton Andar, please make me a perception check. Nope. Andar, you see him uh, watching you in particular. I just kind of uh, grin and wave. <laughs> he, uh, when he notices that you noticed him, he gets this, he suddenly gets this big smile on his face and then, and then waves, waves to you as well. And then Leda walks up, she's like, all right, Lovius, let's, let's go make, make camp at once more. Got an early, early day tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes! Who was watching? A uh, Lovius. Losvius. Losvius was looking at us, or...? Yep, this guy, Losvius. He was looking at you, Andar. Looking the specifically... The halfling was watching us, okay. Specifically you, Andar. Okay. All right. I will relay that to Noct. They, uh... They leave the Perhaps scene as was well. paying us unduly attention, Noct. Mm. Not really sure what to do with that. Well, let's keep an eye on him along with those wagons we're watching. Could be treachery. What was uh, the dwarf? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, what was he, the halfling, wearing? Was he like in his night clothes? He, quote unquote. <laughs> he was just wearing his uh, his regular travel clothes. So he seems to have been uh, sleeping in his travel clothes. They're not, um, they're not, like, super expensive or anything. They're just regular, uh, common traveler's clothes. Okay. What I was trying to figure out was, was he 
at some point maybe wearing cult clothes and changed out of them, but it sounds like no, so good to know. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. With a name like obvious. <laughs> I walk off with Summer Dong or Summer Dag. Summer Dong? <laughs> <laughs> Summer Dong. <laughs> Towards the, uh, the tents he had uh, erected for us. Right. <laughs> God, window is heavy in this session. <laughs> Back away from Freddy now. <laughs> you ready to just roll her eyes? No, no, no. Freddy didn't say that. Sauerkraut did, explaining what Freddy's doing. Then wife of Sauerkraut will just roll her eyes. <laughs> wife of Sauerkraut. Damn, Paige, don't want As they okay. uh, walk back to the tents, uh, Ereva will, you know, remind Hawkeye and Friday and just encourage them to, to get their rest right away, and I'll continue watch. So everybody, like everybody is Sounds able to, to <clears throat> everybody is able to uh, go back to their sleeping place, wherever they decided to make their beds, and go back to sleep. Resting for the night with Ereva continuing her watch. So we will go to the morning. Everyone benefits from a long rest. Hell yeah. And levels up. <laughs> Five times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to fucking scrub those dragons out of existence. That was cool. Yes, now it is the morning with dawn breaking through. And you all wake up to uh, sounds of everyone else in the camp just getting up, some earlier than others, uh, breaking camp, uh, putting stuff back together, getting ready back for the uh, wagon. Tail end of... Andar and not monotonous droning morning ritualistic prayer. Finish it, brother. Finish it. Come on. <laughs> yes, I, I, just with it's very little enthusiasm at this point. I think it started out slightly like, yeah, this is the thing, and now it's just like, yeah, <laughs> repeating exactly as uh, I, I beg say. thee, I beg thee, I beg thee. Come on now, I beg thee. Uh, I, I beg thee. Loyal fury, <laughs> loyal fury, to aid me, to aid me in these things, in these, in these things, and to most of all, and to most of all, help me, help me to live up to your examples, to live up to your examples of duty, of duty. Loyalty, loyalty, and obedience, and obedience. Very well, good, good. Could we good. next time do it after I get food? Because I get no, it's no. Good. It you would start be the day. So you, much... start, oh, you, God. you start the day with your your prayer. That is what you must do. But I'm so hungry. <laughs> yes, yes. And he is hungry. He is hungry for your servitude. Yep. <laughs> I'm much bigger than you. I need more food than you do. He you don't understand what it's like. <laughs> he is bigger than both of us. It goes on like this for some time. <laughs> <laughs> now we break bread. And I hand him a small piece of bread. Yeah, I eat the small piece of bread while while actually putting together real food for <laughs> for us. <laughs> Andar, you also notice Edelry is over by uh, by the side of the road, uh, kneeling down. Make me an insight check. Insight. 
Alrighty. I'm supposed to be good at this. Used to helping. So you <clears throat> you uh, notice that her position is reminiscent of a uh, prayer. So you you are gathering a sense that she is in her own prayers. Good for her. I will leave her be and let her worship her deity. What if it's the Raven Queen? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's something altogether different. And I will have to smite her. <laughs> oh. You're gonna have to uh, pop off, smite unfortunately. <laughs> Say again? <laughs> I said, smite me, almighty smite her. <laughs> <laughs> smite oh, me, oh, almighty <laughs> smite her. This is going south quickly. <laughs> Somebody's right, so feeling she, uh, a bit randy, aren't they? <laughs> Been deployed too long. <laughs> no, that was a Bruce Almighty quote. Oh, okay. He's like, <laughs> oh. you just deflated Andar. That's that's actually my first name. <laughs> yeah. So Edelry finishes her prayer and then she she. Begins to walk back to the wagon. It appears that most of the caravan train is ready to go, so they're, so they're everybody's just waiting for the last of the stragglers, uh, putting putting the last parts of their of their camp and their their beds, maybe tents, into their wagons. She she passes by you, says, "Ready to go." I offer her some of nuts, uh, grape nuts. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the cereal that he makes from last session. We were talking about him cooking rocks. Huh? Yeah, but new meaning yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she stops mid-stride and then actually takes notice of that, looks down at the, uh, at the grapes, grape nuts or whatever you call them, and then she, uh, she actually reaches out, mm, thank you, takes some, and then uh, puts them in her mouth and chews on them. There is a uh, slight smile playing on her lips as she uh, gives you thanks. And continues to the wagon, saying, All right, I think we're ready to go. We mount our horses and yep. get the horses. Yeah, let's hop on to it. Hope you're ready for another day's ride, Intrepid. <laughs> Role playing a horse, I love it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's dedication. I gently stroke the horse's side. It seems. Come on, y'all! If we're in that mode, let's go with it. It seems ready and eager for for the <laughs> travel to come. <laughs> oh my god! I'm, I'm seriously I'm just trying to, trying to role play this. One. I'm seriously just trying to role play this, and everything is going out that direction. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, back to Freddy, Hawkeye, and Ereva. Samardag has readied his wagon and waits eagerly for you guys to join on the road he's just kind of uh, sitting there um happily uh looking in your direction when he notices you guys looking he waves he says oh, you guys ready to go yeah well, let me just hop on my horse i'm petting silver trail uh, and then hop on silver trail so he, uh, uh Summer Dad looks to the north, looks to the south, sees the caravan, and says, "All right, looks like we're uh, we're we're about ready to go." And you all begin your travels through the fields of the dead once more, which we will. back on here so I will just use Nox again like we were last time you are still in the fields of the dead making your way north along the coastway coming up upon the troll claws making your way to dragon spear that this is the way north quite a ways to get to Waterdeep as you can see several months mm-hmm 
Oh, well, he said it was going to be a two month trip, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about be a bit. two months. Right. <clears throat> uh, I wonder if this map is to scale it. Could just do like every square is 15 miles or whatever. Alright, not. You guys travel along the way. Get quite a distance in uh, around about eight hours. Nothing particular of note happens, and you make camp. You break camp in the morning just like normal. Waking upon the next day. Much similar has happened. Three days in, pretty boring. Seems like your way is going pretty easy so far. You are out of the Fields of the Dead, making your way out of the Troll Claws, in fact. Getting close to Dragon Spear. You are actually on the outskirts of Dragon Spear. You can probably um, see a little bit more traffic heading heading north to this town. Just pass through it, actually. Making your way through the uh, through this village, this town. Are. I'm missing out on experience. Uh, that's exactly why we're not counting experience anymore, because otherwise we would probably be pretty bummed about not getting any encounters. Yep. <clears throat> we, gotta, we gotta get the blood of our enemies to grow strong. I wonder how many converts we've got by now. <laughs> it's more like that they give our fucking area like a wide berth not to get dragged oh, into look out, there's constantly. that guy again. Oh, there's gosh, don't look at him, again. don't look oh, at him, shit. don't look at him. <laughs> <laughs> if you make eye contact, he's gonna try to get you to come over to his weird cult I think he's starting. I don't know, he just, he just rambles and rambles. <laughs> he might even show you his torm. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Stories about the most uncomfortable evenings that these guys, these poor caravan riders have ever had. God, I feel sorry for that poor orc that's with him. That guy hates him so much. <laughs> <clears throat> right, Ondar, as you are joining on, on the road outside of uh, Dragon Sphere, Lovius actually comes up, sidles, sidles right by you. Morning, Ondar! Greetings, uh, Master Long Nose. How, how, how's the uh, how's the caravan treating you? Well, quite satisfactorily, actually. We've been blessed with fair winds and easy travels. Ah, yes, yes. Been been pretty easy so far. Not for that beginning, huh? Uh, uh, you you been in caravans before? Um. One, yes. Ah, I, th I thought so. I thought so. Uh, where, where, where was that? Where were you headed to? I was traveling through uh, Tether, uh, making my way through the green fields, uh, through Om, and headed towards uh, areas to the east. Tether? Oh, wow. I've never been there. What's that like? Tether's a beautiful country. Uh, 
serene, green, uh, quiet, calm, beautiful. Sounds wonderful. I already wonderful. said that, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. I, I, I gotta travel there sometime. You should visit it. Yes, it is quite beautiful. Uh, maybe I can hire you on the way back, take you back to your home. I would gladly go back to Tether, see my family, yes. Oh, really? Well, well I'll tell you what, I'll see what I can what I can find in Waterdeep. Maybe I can uh, uh, plan, plan a trip to uh, to this, this Tether. Yes, that would no. be... Well, I have uh, business north of Waterdeep, but perhaps if... Uh, are you going to Waterdeep and then going to stay there? Are you going there to stay? Oh, no, I'm not staying. I, me life's on the road. I'm a, oh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a merchant. You're a traveling salesman, are you? Actually, no, he's a teamster. No, my, me life's on the road. I'm a, I'm a teamster. I, uh, oh. Yeah, I take care of the horses and, and, and I do this and that. And he, he gives you a, a really uh, generic... Um, Kind of over-explanatory about all the little minor details about being a teamster. Yeah, and the horses, they like they like this. Uh, uh, a lot of people feed them, feed them this kind of pellet, but, but I, I mix it in with this hay and everything. Right. Yeah, I, I'll be I'll, I'll be on my way to to uh, Water Deep, and then I'll I'll, I'll take a uh, I'll take a uh, I'll, I'll make a contract for for something back to south. I I usually travel right here between Boulders Gate and Water Deep. It's good business. Right. I might, I might have to see what, what, what there is to this tether, though. It's a beautiful land. You should, you should, the halflings are the, uh, are, are quite welcome there. They're quite populous in tether. Oh, really? Yes. Never met a halfling from tether. Well, there's again, quite a I've, few of them. Then again, I've never been south of Baldur's Gate. Oh, that blasted city. All that trade it, rules. Yes, it is. I, I just passed through there. It's it's quite um, sketchy, I would say. Yeah, the the trade princes and everything in there they they have a tight leash on on the trade. Ain't nothing going through Baldur's Gate. I didn't enjoy it at all. You, you travel there often? Ah, oh, yeah. I've I've seen the I've seen the gates. Been to the Black Gate enough. I don't really go inside the city. Don't have need. I make me money on the road. Stay on the road. So you are quite familiar with uh, travel from there. Yeah, yeah. Been on this road most of my life. Right. Seen a lot of uh, caravans from Baldur's Gate to Waterdeep. Aye, aye. Quite familiar with the merchants that travel the way. Uh, yeah, you can say that. I've seen Edelry enough times. Right? She's quite familiar to you then. Familiar enough. Can't say she's very good for conversation. Well, she's stern. She's professional enough. How about these other fellows? These, uh, how many were there? How many wagons of these, uh, uh, okay, so there are six of them? Let's see. Yes, there are six cultist wagons from your recollection, and there are also let's There are also nine merchants with an assortment of teamsters and other guards spaced out along. So it's a pretty big caravan. There's Ondar. about 14 total wagons? 15? Yeah, probably between 14 and 18. Oh, okay. So I'll just much, point out one of the, one of the random... Much bigger than uh, the, the caravan that you were a part of. Okay, so I'll point out one of the random cultist wagons. You know of that, that merchant there? You know of him? All right, so Lovius uh, turns around in, in his little saddle. He's he's riding a mule donkey. He uh, turns around to to see that, and he uh, gets a, a screwed up look on his face. Ah, uh, no, can't, can't, can't say I've seen anyone in those wagons. Yeah, there's quite there's quite a few new ones on on here. This trick. 
I've noticed that when we stop that those guards tend to stay to themselves. They don't uh, socialize with anyone like the other guards. He kind of shrugs his shoulders. Eh, you'll get some of them. It's annoying to me, but... Lots of people hard like sticking to, to themselves. Right, but uh, the guards tend to... You know, we have to stick together and provide, you know, security for everyone, or... And they don't. I just wondered why. Ah, oh, well... That's, that's typically how things go from Baldur's Gate. It's it, it's it's quite a different city. I mean, I, I don't like it a whole lot, but uh, uh, the the merchants actually hire all their own. Baldur's Gate doesn't do any do any of that. So all the merchants have their own uh, own guards. So I, I suppose whoever hired those guys uh, just told them, no, nope, you're only you're only protecting me. You're only protecting my wagon. And he he does a show of like. Burp, 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 burp. Right, right. And then he, right. and then he, uh, he goes on to, uh, he, and Waterdeep is different. The city actually takes care of the highest. So I actually get hired by the city, and then uh, they, they, they appoint me to a, uh, to one of the, uh, the merchants. Right. Same with the gods. Right. But once, if the caravan's under attack, the whole caravan's under attack, not just one wagon. True, true. Yeah, I don't know. Never really been in a, si a situation that uh, uh, gods couldn't couldn't handle it. You'll have a few deaths, of, of course. The road is dangerous, but overall, usually enough are, are hired that they t they can take care of the of what's needed. Well, we've been lucky. We haven't been attacked, so I guess hopefully we'll remain lucky. Still a ways to go to Waterdeep. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing short of an old cold attack. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, we don't. Uh run into that and don't say that too loud my friend here has orc blood you know yeah he uh right away after he said it he thought it was gonna be funnier than it sounded but then all of a sudden he gets a little quieter and then realizes hey maybe maybe that's uh that's a, that's a little bit too too taboo <laughs> and he just uh he he tags along with you Andar. uh it's kind of hard to <laughs> shake him he's right constantly wanting to talk and um ask you just a multitude of questions Andar starts proselytizing. Preaching Torm's word. It, doesn't ma it does not matter what you talk about. He is <laughs> eating it up. <laughs> All right, talking he's, about the code. Yeah, he's a talker. All right, so we okay. go back to the uh, the main map to join once again with Noct as the, uh, the party token. Another day goes by. I feel like I'm going through this way too fast, but... Yeah. <laughs> That's the rolls we get. Well, I mean, like, uh, how far you've gotten. Like, technically, this has only been, like, what, six days? But that would definitely be a lot more. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You know, because it's supposed to take, like, two months. I don't want to spend too much time on this particular part. <laughs> You don't want to spend seven sessions with us slowly climbing a map. Yep. <laughs> oh my god. Right. We can actually be here. So this will be. <clears throat> so one thing that uh, not in Andar you have noticed on your travels is Beige Seshapol does not take care of his horse very well. He allows their collars and girths to chafe, sores in their hide, skimps on their feet, and whips them when the aching hungry animals don't pull hard enough or fast enough to suit him. Doesn't seem to come from anything malicious, he's just doesn't care, you know? He's just like going about things seems to think that this is just how you drive horses. 
one particular morning, um, or one particular day, about high afternoon, the um, the train has has come across a a, a a muddier area of the road, and his wagon is stuck. He is whipping his horse to try and get it to pull. And it's definitely not pulling very hard because it is it seems to be somewhat weakened. <clears throat> so you uh, you see him up north of you on the ground whipping the horse trying to get it to pull the wagon forward. Come on, you mangy git! At Hillary, may I go forward and assist him? Adelry does not say anything, but she has daggers in her eyes, and she just nods. Do what you have to do. I'll ride forward. Master Bayed. As I dismount. <laughs> Master Bayed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I, no, I was not going there. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't ignore it after this. That one. After how we yeah, started. Oh my uh-huh. goodness. <laughs> sure. He, I he, wonder, I'm innocent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bade, Bade turns to you. Ah, Anda. How's it going? Stop beating your animal. It, it won't fucking go. We're, stuck well, the beating, damn... it's not, it's stuck. Beating, it's not going to make it go anymore. You've beaten it to, it's almost dead. Stop or I will beat you. He looks extremely taken aback at that. And, and, uh, he goes silent for, for a minute. And then he, he regards you and says, oh, uh, how about this? S- sell me your horse. I will not I sell you my animal. We well, will then get how your the hell animal. am I supposed to get it out of, out of the freaking mud? I will help you get it unstuck. I walk over and I lay on hands on his beast. <sighs> I, heal it of any, I heal it of any injuries that has been done to it. Okay. And then I... I try to help pull it out of the mud. All right, so you uh, you actually lay your hands on the creature, and some healing energy seems to rejuvenate it. Um, some of its sores are uh, healed over, and it, it seems a lot more uh, preppy. <clears throat> and Bade's just kind of looking from afar, watching you do this. Okay, so now what? How, how do we get this out of the mud? The horse won't pull. It will pull. That's what horses were made to do. You just have to coax it. Please make me an animal handling check with advantage for healing them. <laughs> Yikes. Oops. <laughs> the creature, or the horse, uh, seems to shy away from your touch. You have made this animal hate you. You have, you have, you have caused this creature to hate people, Master Bayed. <laughs> Master Bader. <laughs> <laughs> He, he... I'm, I'm angry, okay? Uh, Andar yeah. is, is extremely angry with this man right now. And, he, puts and... his, he puts his hands out to the side, kind of like, what, what do you mean? He's like, what are you talking about? It's a horse. They pull the wagons. What do you mean? It is a living thing. It has a mind. It has, it has a heart. It has, it has a brain. It may be simple, but it still has thoughts. I, uh, <laughs> Andar, Andar mounts his horse and guides his horse over next to this horse and again tries to, um, you know, not 
So he grabs the the horse that not the horse itself, but like the the bridle, the bridle and such. Yeah, and, and tries to encourage the creature with his horse to pull the wagon out of the mud. What I don't know what the rest of the caravan is doing. I don't know if they're going around or if they're waiting in line. Uh, they're all waiting they... in line. So, like, right. every, every wagon basically has to go through this mud track, but Bait is the only one that seems to have had a lot of trouble with it. All the other horses are healthy enough except for him. Right. So, <clears throat> whatever, you know, I mean, Andar is attempting whatever he can to uh, cajole this sorrowful animal to... Uh, you know, get out of this mess. What's this guy carrying? What's he? What's he? What's his? He's the one with the alcohol. Yeah, that's right. He's got the the wagon full of beer or something, right? Yeah, give me one second. If he does see the rest of the party, he will uh, try to gain the attention of perhaps Hawkeye and Hawkeye will go forward all right so uh Bane Seshpol is is uh is traveling north with liquor well his wagon is somewhat diminished than when he started he seems to have uh sold most of it while on the road and drank quite a bit of it himself I will roll, like, meander forward as well. Like, Hawkeye and I both just kind of... I'll kind of meander, like, a little bit after her. All right, you guys are on the bottom of the map now. Uh, do we hear Bade yelling at his horse still? Or did he calm down? He's, um... He's standing off watching Ondar with his, his arms crossed. Hey, what's up, Ethan? Um, I'll go for it. Right. Okay. Hello. Greetings. Perhaps you can speak to this man's beast and gain its confidence and ask it to try harder to pull this wagon out of this mess. If not, we will have to uh. unhitch it, and I will hook my horse to the wagon, and we will get it free. But. He has, and I look at the man, I look at Bayad when I say this, I will, I will, he has mistreated this creature and it is very mistrusting of people at this moment. He puts his hands, glare. he puts How his hands you? up in the air, he puts his hands up in the air like, like, fuck everybody basically, and he's like, just get the fucking thing going, we gotta, we, we gotta be on our way, come on, everybody's watching me, get this horse going. And then he, uh, he, uh, makes his way to move over closer to the horse. Uh, I, as he I put my hand in the way and like push him back. Right. Like he, you're not going north near this horse. As he approaches right now. the horse, uh, Ireva can't help but she doesn't grab an arrow but she, she has her bow in hand and she looks at the man with just hate. Um, Masturbator, I, I do not wish to do you harm, but my animals. party will hurt you if you continue to do suffrage to this animal. You see the knight and the mage hired along with his caravan, uh, watching you closely, looking to Bade for uh, any sign that he wishes for them to intervene. Oh, I didn't know these guys were here. Um, I probably should have had this my before. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been... Yeah. Uh, that would have been some because I would have gone to the knight first and told the knight to warn his but that's cool yeah I gotcha <laughs> alright so super, uh, super, cool, super cool you put your hands on Bade t telling him to stop and he just stops and looks at you and he's got a whole bunch of frustration in his face and he, he, he looks around to his charges then he looks to Ondar, Hawkeye, and Ereva, even back to Noct. And, uh, he seems to have, uh, made a point in his mind. Go ahead and, and make me an intimidation check, everyone. Mm. Uh-oh. 
Wow. <laughs> Me too. The two angry. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. He stands it's, somewhat. It's so angry, you're cute. <laughs> I'm just trying to help this horse, okay? He stands somewhat defiant. Um, he has stopped in his tracks, but then he uh, he kind of uh, gets himself a little more upright, and he speaks to Ondar in this. Ondar seems to have uh, taken much of his his focus. This is my horse, and uh, I will not stand for this. I I paid for this animal. I I will I will I will see I will see to it as as I see fit. Yes, it is your beast. And if you kill it, it is your choice. And then I look over his shoulder at the knight. Is the knight walking or riding? The knight is walking. And then you and your companions will be left along the side of the road while the caravan continues with no assistance from anyone. Stranded in the middle of Sword Coast, where banditry and monsters by yourselves. Then I look back at him. But 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 the horse. Would you say that's persuasion or intimidation? Uh, persuasion. Okay, go ahead and roll persuasion for. Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> Whoa. Oh. He, he he doesn't exactly wait for you to finish before he uh, he starts trying to interrupt um, he, he is still kind of uh, visibly wary of you Andar and he says now 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 uh, the, the horse is the horse is fine I mean look at it it's fine we just need oh, to get it out of, out of the mud. It's no, if, fine if, now, if, because if, I healed it. Just help me get this wagon out of the mud and then we can be back on our way. That's what we're trying to do. And I look at uh, Hawkeye and I ask her, please speak to the beast. If he will let me get close to the horse, He's I not can. going to stop you. He he right. waves his yeah he waves his hand like with a with an irritating gesture like come on get on with it. Okay, um, I used my fade touched speak with animals not this spell slot. Fade that touch. makes sense. Because you could use it once a day, once per thing. I also have the misty step. Walk off the map and. Is that your Uber. okay? Fate's hushed. It's the I think the feet she took. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh. Instead of uh, using a spell slot for it. Because you you picked uh, speak with animals speak as speak with animals okay, and yeah. then misty step. Yep, I gotcha. Okay. I follow. Okay, so you gain the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration, which is 10 minutes. Knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence, but at minimum, beasts can give you information about nearby locations and monsters, including whatever they can perceive or have perceived within the past day. You might be able to persuade a beast to perform a small favor for you at the DM's discretion. All right, so what do you say to the end? Um ask what is wrong first and like where it's stuck or how to help the horse um speaks in a in a very tired um tone back to you Um, it just makes a nickering sounds (laughs) which to everybody around just sounds like regular horse noises but you actually understand it um this man has has whipped me so much. I don't know that I can I can go on. I thank the I thank the the yellow haired for healing me, but I I'm, I'm so tired. 
Um, I'll relay this information back, like, as a translator. If that makes sense. You just... Ooh. <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> That's weird. I'll relay the information back and if I was a translator, if that makes sense. Yep. No, I have, I, I think uh, uh, Freddy was trying to talk, so I didn't I didn't catch that. I heard I heard oh, you. Oh, okay. Try it again, Jake. I'll say, like, yeah, just out of nowhere, she starts winning to a horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. You just hear Hawkeye going, outside. Yeah. <laughs> Wilbur. What's going on, Wilbur? <laughs> so this horse is very tired because it has been whipped so many times. It doesn't know if it can continue, but he thinks the yellowed hair, dude. And I assume that's you, Andor. Yes, well, no need to thank, but... As I told you before, Masturbator. <laughs> beating the horse must stop. He just has an annoyed look on his on his face. Like he he does not believe at all anything has he has done is is wrong in any I'm just glaring at him. Andar's just like glaring down at him. You know, Andar's like 6'3", I think I said. Let's look. Yeah, 6'3", 225. Arms, dude. Yeah, arms crossed in, in front of his, his body. He's just like, well? Can you ask the horse to give it all it can to pull and I will, I will aid it with my horse. Okay. I'll ask the I'll ask the horse as oh, I roll my eyes. Go ahead and Maybe ask. it needs a little rest. Perhaps. Um, Andre was asking if I, like, it could put all it has, and then Andre will help with the, um, with his horse. So how do you ask the horse that? Um... I know this person has been beating you, and we will try to get you a little bit of rest for that. But could you try your hardest? And uh, my yellow-haired friend here will help you get out of... get unstuck. It gives a, uh, a long sigh, like... <sighs> I suppose I can try. And then I will try my best to take the whip away, like, talking to the horse, like, and then I'll relay the information back to Bade, I think it is? Yes, And, please. like, say, like, hey, hey, please don't use the whip. Yes, please. Take away the bite. It's too much. And then, uh, Bade, uh, he's actually holding the whip in his one hand as his arms are crossed, and then he just oh, rolls his eyes, just... Fine, and then he, he tosses the whip into the back of his wagon. Okay, and then I'll ask... So I'll relay the information back, and then I'll ask another question. Um, so what side is primarily stuck? Like... Are you asking the horse this, or are you asking uh, me? Yeah. A asking the horse like what side is primarily stuck like where I can, I can try to help get that side out in order to move forward it's not so much that it is stuck that I'm just so tired and weak okay and then I'll relay that information back in fact the horse isn't really stuck at all it's more that Horse is tired and weak. So it's been beaten too much. Can I try to roll medicine to help? I don't know if that will help, but I don't know what I would use it for, but it's uh, a thought. Go ahead and let's see. In the uh, roll me an animal handling first.
attempting to move closer to the horse, it is still very hand shy and uh, does not let you get close to it. So if you wanted to use medicine, you probably could, but you can't get close to the end to be able to do it. Um, so. I'll ask if I could touch it this time. Like, hey, I'm going to try to help you. Is it is it okay if I'll be able to touch you? Uh, don't 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 hurt me. It says. I, I won't hurt you. Roll persuasion. This time I'll cast guidance. Oh. Can I cast guidance for that? Yes, because you are intentionally trying to do something. Go ahead. Okay. And then D4 on myself. Go. Now when you roll guidance, you'll be able or when you roll uh, persuasion. Persuasion. Yep, persuasion. You edge a little closer, and even still, like it, the horse, uh, its back leg comes up and kicks the ground, and, and it gives a snort. Right. Does not seem to want to let you get close. Um, so I'll talk to the horse. I was like, I have some healing word and I can heal you some more. I mean, you'll still be a little bit tired, but. Uh, food? Have, have I do apples? have food. I have. You have apples? Uh, I would apples. I have apples? You're not. Um, is there apples nearby? Like, they you, have apples? You could try to forage. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll try to do that. And since I'm an... the Wanderer Outlander, do I automatically, like, can find food? Um, With what my does background? the Outlander say? Is your Outlander back? Mm hmm. Front page of her. Oh, on the, yeah, that's right. It's on the front page. I was looking at the ability. So. You have. Wanderer feature. You have an excellent memory for maps and geography, and you can always recall the general layout of terrain, settlements, and other features around you. In addition, you can find food and fresh water for yourself and up to five other people each day, provided that, that the land offers berries, small game, water, and so forth. So yes, you would definitely uh, um, be able to do that pretty much without making a check. You are in okay, a... Yeah, I'll, I'll yep, you're in a grasslands area, so... Um, there would probably be the odd apple tree, but it's more uh, berries that would be easiest to find. Um, berries be okay? I mean, I don't know if I could find apples, but I can find berries. Uh, uh, it, it seems a little disappointed. I do love apples. Uh, it's been a, been a long, such a long time since I've had berries. Yes, uh, I would appreciate that. Um, I'll go look for berries then. All right, after, uh... Talk to you, Raven. Hey, do you want to gather some berries with me? I'll, uh... I'll join her for gathering, you know, whatever we can for the horse. All right, so after, uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes, um, going out into the brush, looking for, for berries and such, um, be able to find a, a good, good handful of, uh, Edible berries. Mm. Both of you. The duration was 10 to 15 minutes, but I showed the berries to the horse and like try with my druidic instead of like doing speak with the animals again and like showing the berries. Okay, so you're going to cast I Speak have with some Animals again? For you. 
You no, cast... I'm just using druidic instead of speak with animals. Okay. But I was just showing that I have the berries in my hand. So the thing about dru druidic is I'm pretty sure it's just um, a language for druids, but it, it can't actually be understood or spoken to with him. Oh, then yeah, I'll just do it. Do what? Uh, speak with the animals again. Okay, so you cast speak with animals again, um, using up a spell slot. Yeah, it's level one, right? Yep. Or is it level two? Yeah, level it's one. Level okay. One. All right, so uh, yeah. you come back and, and the horse is is looking at your hands. It, it seems um, seems a lot more accepting of you getting closer with the the uh, uh, delicious food in your hand. I got berries. Mm. Oh. Can I can I can I have some? Of course, and then I'll walk closer, and then I would, like, you're able to, like, walk closer with the berries. It lets you get close, but it, it, it definitely is a standoffish. Watching your movements, um, it seems very, very tense. But after, after a moment of you uh, being close, um, it, it leans its head down and uh, sniffs at your hands. I will, um, like, seeing that the horse is, you know, how hesitant and, like, knowing that Hawkeye has, the, like, communication going, I will stand nearby, but I don't actually approach, you know, so you're able, or a Hawkeye can come get more berries from me, but not to startle the animal more. All right. Um, I'll also cast Animal Friendship. That's okay. Okay. Awesome. So now the uh, you cast animal friendship, and all semblance of um, standoffishness and fear um, washes away from the horse, and it uh, it nickers and it stands up a, a little taller. Now understanding that you mean it absolutely no harm. And then I walk up closer and give it some of the berries all right so it uh it sniffs your hand and then um as you're as you cast animal friendship and the fear washes away mm, berries and then it uh it uh it starts eating from your hands hungrily within a few short swallows all of the berries are gone and then i'll walk over to your raven and grab the berries from her hand all right more berries. Eats them up hungrily. Is there any other sort of food that you like? I mean, I don't know if we have hay, but... Oh, that was wonderful. Oh, I think I'm good now. Okay. May, may I touch you this time to try to heal you and do some medicine work? Sure. You may touch me. You want so to... I'll go over and try to see. Yeah, go ahead and uh, roll medicine. Okay. And then I'll... Can I do guidance on myself this time too? Since yes. I'm actively trying. Yep. Okay. All right, so you are, uh, this creature is calm now. The horse is, is letting you get near to it and, uh, not worried at all, and you are, uh, petting it and stroking its body. You see a lot of uh, 
minor scars that seem to have healed over, but there are also some uh, uh, bigger ones, some skin that has, has been flayed and healed over. And there are saddle sores upon its shoulder, skin chafed raw, just down to the, uh, down beneath its, its fur. It has patches of hair that is, that is just telling of an extremely unhealthy diet and uh, malnutrition, as well as uh, it, it's just not well taken care of. It, is, it has been used and abused. The, the open sores have healed over from, from Ondar, um, so there is not anything right now that you can uh, uh, do to like heal it any further. But your medicine check is telling you that it, it needs like a couple weeks of recovery in some stable to uh, recover from its treatment. Okay. Um, I'll relay that information back to Ondar and Fade. I mean, everyone that's there, but. Fade just has this look of annoyance. Um, wanting to be on the way. You're not moving. You're not doing anything. And then he uh, goes back to the wagon, reaching for his whip. No. Nah, uh, uh, uh. You said you would get it moving. You haven't done nothing. You've made a few nickering, nickering noises. I'm still stuck in the mud. The rest of the wet, the rest of the caravan behind me is waiting. We gotta get going. Uh, the horse is not stuck. It is tired. Well, then move it. Because you keep on beating it. Well, move it. You said you would move it. You came over here. You get all up in my business. You try telling me how to take care of my property. And then you're just taking more time. You're wasting time. It's already been half an hour. We're losing time. I look at Ondar what to do. Ondar's on his horse. He... He looks down at... Masturbator and says, "If you strike the horse again, I I will have to strike you." At that, the knight starts walking up a little closer, and the mage has one hand on top of a component pouch. I mean, I can try to get... <laughs> Freddy would like to be on the map. Yeah, he probably needs to be, because I'm going to look at the mage and go, I'm going to cast... I've, I've tried to say a couple of times in chat that, like, Freddy wanders up, but... Oh, did you already uh -oh. see that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to cast command and tell the mage to run. And at this point, Ireva now, like, so she has her, her longbow in hand, and she, um, like, has her hand back, gripping one of her arrows, and just kind of, like, steps to the side of it. I grip my quarterstaff, too. Hey, Noct. What the fuck's going on? Oh, I think we're about to get fired. <laughs> I specifically oh. didn't go up there because I was trying not to escalate this to violence, but <laughs> looks like yeah. it's happening that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to. I, I think if we approach it, it's going to maybe just wait here. If things pop off, then then we do something. How about this, Bane? If you give me the whip, the horse will go. You said you were gonna get the horse oh. going, and then before nothing happened. You just said a bunch of bunch of horse stuff. It's standing up, isn't it? It was standing up before. You didn't do anything. We haven't moved. Hand me the whip, and we'll get the horse going. Make me an intimidate check.
I mean, that's better, but... He looks at you, and uh, there's a moment of hesitation, but he then just turns over and says, I'm, I'm done with this. And then he goes into reach over into his wagon to pull out the whip. And then I look over under her, I was like, uh, hey, this horse is very, very tired. It's not really going to move. This will make it worse. Damn it. Held duel. No, I hit the wrong thing. I'm trying oh, to fix something. Okay. I was gonna say them's fighting words. Babe takes out the whip and then he looks to his knight and he says, "You go on the back of the wagon and you push." And he looks over to the mage and he says, "Just make yourself useful somehow." And then he he goes up to the horse and pushes on its body. He doesn't whip it, but he like pushes it on its body. Come on, we gotta get going, let's go. Again, the night before going back takes a, a, a long look at you, Andar, and his eyes are a little narrowed, but he, I follows, wink, his, he follows his instructions. <laughs> <laughs> he follows his instructions, goes back, and begins to push on the wagon. The horse does not move forward. I use my horse to try and pull the wagon, you know, by, you know, uh, basically, a, you know, grabbing the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what do they call that? The, uh, whatever's hooked to the horse. Yeah. So yeah. do you I get, shake my head. Do you get <laughs> off your horse and like basically hook no, it up? I'm sitting on my horse. I just okay. reach down and grab whatever you know the uh, the livery that's hooked to. Okay, gotcha. The poor beast that this guy's been beating on. I just grab it. I grab the horse's stirrups or not stirrups, but the the uh, get the uh, harness, thing. the harness and everything that this horse is hooked to, and just turn. I turn my horse and just grab the harness that this horse is hooked to and just start pulling the wagon as much as I can with my horse. All right. So it's more you're... my strength than the horse. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Know, but... I got gotcha. you. So this is a really awkward position for you. Um, yeah. The, uh, the hookups that the wagon hookups that are uh, for the horse are down kind of low. So you have to actually like... <laughs> sitting on your horse you have to kind of bend down to try and grab something and you have a yeah. really precarious position it's either that the wagon will go or you will fall off at this point pretty yeah, much probably um i'll i'll help Andar since i'm on the ground all right so hawkeye you grab onto um the wagon as well i need Andar and hawkeye to make me a strength check Right. Very nice. All right, so a uh, a concentrated group effort is pushed upon the wagon from the back and the front, with Bade kind of coaxing his horse on. The horse itself doesn't really move. Um, but your combined effort is actually moving the wagon forth just a little bit, though it is still stuck in the mud. And you hear Bade, blasted fucking animal, whoosh, whips it. And the uh, horse gives uh, a great whinny, no, no, no. and then moves forward. While you guys are pulling, and the knight in the back is pushing the wagon, the horse now moving forward, Bade jumps out of the way as the wagon moves out of the mud. It is no longer stuck. Ha ha! There we go, finally! Oh, we can go forward! 
Andor uh, turns, dismounts, walks back, grabs the whip, yanks it out of his hand, throws it as far as he can into the into the you know away. Uh, While you are uh, doing that, the knight okay. sees and right away rushes up, okay. hand on hand on hilt to the blade, though it is still in its scabbard. Okay. Hand on the hilt of his blade. He puts his hand out on your shoulder as mm -hmm. you throw the whip out into the woods. Okay. I, I wouldn't do that, sir. Already did it. <laughs> sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> your point's been made. Let's not let this turn to bloodshed. Right. Bade, Let's not. Bade is just fuming at your, uh, um, your daring. So, what the hell? How am I going to get this thing going now? You have talk to it. You, yes, coax it gently. The horse will do your bidding. You have reins. Use them. It is. <laughs> it does not need to be beaten. The I look at the knight and I say, to "Horses, shut your mouth." I look at the knight and I say, "If he whips the horse again, I will hurt him. And if I have to go through you, and then I lean around and look at the mage and you." To do it, I will. The knight, Understood. The knight actually nods his head with a measure of respect to you, Andar. He he notices your uh, um, the the iconography of Torm on your person as well as uh, your noble bearing, and he uh, he says, "I understand." And then he actually even puts a hand on Bade's on Bade's shoulder, and he says, "Bade, come on." We, it's it's done. The horse is out. We can get moving now. Bait is I just, just turn. I turn around and, and remount Intrepid and ride back to uh, Not. With a slight grin on my face. Bait is just fuming. He's irritated. Nothing worked how how he wanted it to. He's. He doesn't like dealing with these uh, these stupid things. Just wants to be on his way. He gets back onto the uh, the caravan wagon, grabs the reins, and then uh, flits them to let the horse know that it's it's time to move forward. He is out of the mud, and the horse is moving forward. It is moving at a uh, um, a slightly renewed pace, um, faster than it, it, it was before, um, seeming to be a little more well off than it was previously, though it is still very tired and needs some rest and to be out of these rains. I, uh, nod at Freddy and Ureva and, and I thank Hawkeye as she rides past. Um, I was gonna s tell the horse thank you and hope it gets better. The horse, I, give the uh, mage, I give the mage the finger from behind. <laughs> <laughs> the mage just has kind of a, a a bored look on his face, like whatever. Like I'm just getting I'm just getting paid, man. <laughs> and uh, I, show him, I show him my Andar, or I show him my Torm. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you didn't. <laughs> All right. Hawkeye, the horse actually uh, uh, says, ah, thanks. Um, I, I hope soon to be to be out of this situation. Yeah, I mean, enough, you will be. I mean, the whip is gone now, so. Probably got a stash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully that Barrel gets better. Whips. All right, and so, no, oh, whoops. I forgot the whisper. Yeah. Oh, well. <clears throat> All right. Andar, as you come... I to knock. Andar apologizes to knock for the divergence from the travels and then looks at El, El Hedri and says, uh, sorry, milady. She says... Something had to be done. She says, no, thank you. You exercised a lot of patience. I would have just been done with the man. Seeming to imply that you 
Should have just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I so... mean. All right. So with that done, you can go back to the top map. The uh, the Sword Coast map. Just outside of Daggerford, the rest of the day, um, you travel forward and, and make camp. The man is no longer whipping his animal because he doesn't have it, and he is experiencing a, a little bit of trouble getting the, the horse to, to do what he what he wants it to. Um, the rest of the camp kind of kind of listens with some uh, some enthusiasm at his difficulties. Uh, nobody likes hearing or seeing a, a horse being beaten. Um, he is the last to break camp, getting the horse tied off to a tree and just fuming as he goes to sleep with the rest of you. Not with the rest of you at the same time. You wake up the next day Make way into Daggerford. And he's dead. <laughs> Can I technically have gone through a long rest at that point? Yeah. I'll get that for you. Okay. There's an arrow sticking out of his throat. It looks a lot <laughs> like one of your Ava's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What? What? What do you mean? Arrows? I've never seen arrows. What are you talking about? Y'all know I, I can't hit nothing. <laughs> that be my arrows. I'd say after that last combat, that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> did you die, Shane? You didn't change your color, did you? I did. I did. Okay. All right, so within... Within Daggerford, the caravan um, does its thing, kind of moving through, moving through and along the city, um, selling. Some are selling their wares. Um, Bade is attempting to sell some of his ale, but he's in a he's in kind of a foul mood and uh, definitely not as amiable as he usually is. Usually, he's he's very good talking with people, but his his mood seems to have soured his ability and he doesn't make a whole lot of sales. As well, along in the city, um, everybody make me a perception check. Oh, yeah. Too busy All blaring right. at him. Ereva <laughs> and Hawkeye you notice an interesting figure join the caravan. He actually uh, uh, speaks with... He actually speaks with uh, one of the cultist wagons that you know of. It's pretty common for figures along the road to get picked up on the caravan to... Uh, um, Oh yeah, by the way, Osborne had uh, been uh, Osborne had left at the at the nearest hostel. Like a, a waste a, a roadside tavern and bought horses to go back to, to Baldur's Gate. But you see uh, this guy, he he uh, talks with the caravan and though it is not unheard of, it's pretty common for people to get picked up and, and buy a seat on the caravan um, traveling alongside and everything the caravan picks up people and then drops off people from city to city so there's probably a few that were picked up from dragon spear and uh left at daggerford same as there are some being picked up from daggerford but it is curious that this man talk with some of the uh, cultist wagons for they had declined every single um other person along the way saying no to anyone trying to join up on their caravan joining up a seat this man, however, 
Um, <laughs> he is. He's wearing a wool cap with ear and neck, fla neck flaps covering his head. Um, he is wearing a, a lot of, uh, you would think, common clothing. Hawkeye and Ereva, please make me another perception check. Got a dangling participle. <laughs> okay, both of you... <laughs> Both of you actually notice the edges of tattoos peeking out from under the cap. Ooh. You think that his head must be shaved and that he has tattoos on it. Okay. Um, I look at Ureva. You should probably tell Freddy. I could go tell Ondar and Noct what we just experienced. What's he look like? What's he look like? <laughs> if you want to make a history check, go ahead to see if you know anything of significance about that fact. Ooh. Ooh. Nice, you're right. Ooh. I think I might know something. Oh, All right, fire. You're right, uh, through, your, fire. through your travels. Hey, remember the last session when you were just getting all them low rolls and critical ones and everything? <laughs> it's coming, coming back around. All right, so your travels along the world um, have brought you through the wilderness, usually alone. But nevertheless, you always find your way to civilization to uh, pick up contracts and um, ways of, of getting money and, and food and everything. And you have talked with, with many a trader. And one thing about tradesmen and merchants is they love to uh, talk about tr their travels and gossip and, and the ways of the world. Tattoos on someone's head could mean quite a few different things. But one worrying and sobering thought is the common knowledge that wizards from Fae, the red wizards, often oh. have tattoos on their head, and they sh they sh they all shave their head, and then they put tattoos on them to uh, identify them. That okay. is a that is a thought that crosses your mind. Um, this man, I, I, I this hey, man hey, was seen. Hold up, this man was seen talking with the uh, uh, cultist caravans and has bought passage on one of their vessels. And you see him um, sitting on the back of one of their wagons as they, as they are, uh, as the entirety of the caravan is, is, is um, closing up business in Daggerford, readying to travel north once more. Okay. Um, before Hawkeye, you know, as Hawkeye says, hey, you know, uh, we know, we both notice and we know the other person, the other notices, um, and she tells me that she's going to go tell, you know, just let Ondar and Noct know. I kind of quick grab her sleeve and I say, I don't know anything for certain, um, but I have a suspicion that, you know, he may be more than he seems. And I tell her that I, I have a feeling that due to my experience in my travels, we may have just witnessed a red wizard. I opened my eyes. I was like, they need to know now. Like, we need to go. Like, it may not, you may not know it 100%, but any little inkling, we just need to tell them. We need to go. Let's let's inform the others of our party and move on from there. And then with that, yeah. I just I break off and I go to Freddy and I, I fill him in on everything I saw and and what I think. All right. And then I run to Ondar and Noct and tell them everything that Yureva told me and what I experienced. All right, Freddy, where are you right now? What are you up to? What are you doing? Uh, I believe I would be with um, uh, our employer. Still have a job to do. All right. So Freddie is just lounging, leaning on, um, leaning on. You know he's on jamming. His, yeah. You know he's jamming. <laughs> Definitely oh, jamming. Yeah. Jamming. Jamming. <laughs> Working out some experimental <laughs> stuff. Yep. Uh, you Close see by he also seems to play. He's playing a, a flute that you haven't noticed before. Ooh. Ooh. You're a little Jethro Tull. All right, Hawkeye and Ereva, you have noticed Freddy. Oh, 
I'm I'm over by Ondar and Okay. You read the uh... Yes. So um I approach Freddy and I go, half elf. Any chance you might want to take a bit of a break. There's something that I believe you need to know. Eyebrows raise a little bit as I look at you. A break, huh? All right. Put the put the flute away. Stand up. Um, as Hawkeye and I were traveling, we took notice of a man that spoke to one of the cultist wagons. Um, you know, and I, I described how this man looked. You know, I, I described what he was wearing. Said, I don't know anything for certain. There is no direct evidence. He is, however, traveling with one of the cultist wagons now which in itself is abnormal. And, suspicious, yes, I would agree. And through my travels, I have a worry that this may have been a red wizard. Make me a stealth check, Ureva. Ooh. Right. So you are able to uh, pull Freddy aside and, and, and whisper in hushed tones enough that those main, those around may not over. Oh, good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, Freddy know what a red wizard is? Um, red wizards are very, very commonly known. Okay. So a red wizard is um, a wizard from Fey. Fey is a uh, uh, an empire that dabbles in, in magic, so it's ruled over by, by magic overlords. And there is basically no restriction on magic, so like necromancy is not feared upon, it's actually um, one seat of power. The leader of Thay is now Saz Tan. He is a powerful lich. Oh. There are red wizards, um, or basically every school. So there is um, like the school of necromancy, the school of abjuration and everything. They each have a red wizard. Yeah, there is a wizard for everyone that is kind of like the the head head one. But Saz Tam is the overlord overall. Um, also, you know that when Saz Tam took over, there was a huge power struggle and many red wizards actually left and are what would you call it? wandering wizards uh, like someone fleeing from a war torn country refugee yeah like there are uh, refugee red wizards and that's pretty common now but they are still uh, okay. pretty widely feared and avoided gotcha so it's like taboo if you're a red wizard and you go into a village the the entire village is probably gonna try to run you out. Right. Yeah, you know, Freddy raises one eyebrow at that, like the rock would, like, oh, that would be mighty suspicious. Well, let's hope he's not that, shall we? Agreed. Again, I wasn't able to see any absolute proof, but Hawkeye is going to let Andar and Nark know he felt it was important. <laughs> that we are all aware of this. Well, I appreciate you informing me. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, with that, I kind of glance, like I, I have a look of disdain as I look down at the flute and I go, I suppose I should let you carry on then. And I walk away because I've heard lots of his music. All right. Ereva, when you look down at the flute, please make me a wisdom save. Don't tell me where it is, I'll figure it out. Do I just, like, double-click on the actual wisdom part? On your main page, there's abilities on the left and yeah. saves on the right. So oh, yes, you, you double-click on the saves. Perfect. All right. When you first look down at the flute, um, for some reason it, it seems like really beautiful to you and kind of draws your attention in, but you, you shake that off pretty quickly 
Um, this obviously is not some uh, regular old flute. There's there's something uh, curiously special about. It. Where did you get that flute, half elf? On the caravan. Interesting. It is. It's quite a magnificent piece of work. It mm -hmm. makes a beautiful sound. Yes, even to you, Ereva, though you have heard F Freddy's tune, and it seems like you've heard the same one over and over. Even when he plays this flute, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, um, a, a beautiful sound that emanates from it, even to your standard. trying to think what I could actually do right now. We will actually go to Ondar, Noct, and uh, I think Hawkeye's with them at this point. All right, you all notice there is a, uh, a female gnome that has gone up to another um, a wagon talking to the the merchant and the teamster and, and asking asking them a few questions you see you see this figure <clears throat> and there is an exchange of of some coin as she happily hops onto the back of that wagon. She doesn't look treacherous at all. <laughs> totally trustworthy. And this is a, uh, a normal wagon. You actually know... One of the normal caravan or wagons, she joined up to it. Hello. Okay, Hello? so you you know that uh, she joined up with a male moon elf merchant that goes by the name of Nuar Serulim. Serulim. Hmm. Oh. Sorry, I had unexpected visitors. Oh. <laughs> Easy on the keyboard, babe. I wanted one of these when I get home. I'm not even hitting that hard. It's really loud. <laughs> yeah, that's my mechanical keyboard. I bought a new keyboard that's my stealth one. But I've been typing this whole time. You guys can't even hear it. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was I typed it and duh. <laughs> All right, um, so the caravan gets ready to move out and... There is a, a, a call with runners going up and down the caravan saying that they are leaving. One of them, a, a, a younger lad. Caravan's on its way. Get ready to go. Don't want to be late. And then he moves on. <clears throat> I tap on Dar's shoulder and like in the hush tones, like tell him what your Raven I saw. Morning, Hawkeye. Good morning. How are you um, today? So, I'm good, but Eureva and I just had a um, incident. Yeah. So we saw um, somebody was getting on the cultist caravan, but I'm saying this like all whispered, so mm -hmm. like trying, to, so nobody could hear me. Mm -hmm. um, One of those foul wagons barring. allowed someone to join them. Yes, and Ureva actually noticed that it might be a red wizard. Red wizard? A Fan. That. Hmm? that. <clears throat> Did he have hair or no hair? Uh, no, but he had, like, such so that he had a tattoo peeking yeah, out underneath his bull cap. Hmm. We both saw the guy, but she just saw him. 
the tattoo and we assume that he doesn't have hair. Mm-hmm. So he was not one of the exiles, understood. We should keep an eye on him. They worship the undead. But yeah, she said that it was most likely a wizard. They are. They call forth undead. That's uh, a scary thought. That is, well, it cannot be allowed to exist. We should deal with this rather quickly. When the chance prevails, avails itself, we should make Let yeah, Freddy and Ureva know that. that they're necromancers. Um, Ureva was going to tell Freddy. Very well. Thank you for letting me know. Mm-hmm. Who, Did you hear that, that not? Mean? What? Yeah, uh, oh, 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 man, I don't... I thought our plan was to follow these guys, so we are we right. just going to fight them? Well, if he joined the caravan, if he joined one of those wagons, then he is in cahoots with them. Yes, well, he, sure. he joined. Then we're going to follow them, which just adds fuel to the fire to, when they get to their destination, to lay waste to them, yes? Sure, you're making it sound like we needed to put that red wizard down earlier, though. Well, if the chance avails itself earlier than later, then yes. The red Maybe. wizard is a... <clears throat> From my understanding of what my grandfather taught me about the active red wizards, the ones that have not grown their hair out, uh, they are necromancers calling forth undead which are akin to worshippers of Bane, and we cannot have that. Well, uh, uh, I'm not here to argue with that. If, if you want to cook, <clears throat> I mean, we can just keep an eye on him, and the first time he goes out, take a piss, you know, right. cut his head off. Uh, so, I'm not against it. I just want to know what the plan about... When the opportunity presents itself to deal with Okay, so he that individual by himself. Yes, we must take advantage of it. Yes. All right. Well, uh, we should probably let the others know to let us know if he sees, and then we'll just we'll right. just fucking wreck him in the woods, right? All in the service of Tom. <laughs> yes. 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 For Tom, uh, it's my it's my him. Yes. So, to Tom's judgment, right? Yes. We send, him, we send him to be judged. Yes. He's already I... been judged. I get the right. sense that... Well, but he's going to get judged in person, right? After we judge him and then he gets judged. No, right? we are delivering the judgment. Oh, he's so he's, like, he's already been judged. Yes. Okay. I get the sense that Noct is, like, making the connection in his head that killing somebody's okay as long as you just say that you smited them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was okay before we had that justification. <laughs> Noct is just like, Noct is like, well, as long as I just say that I was smiting the guy, then it's in the service of Torm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then it's not wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you guys notice Lady get the on gnome. the regular caravan? No, yes. Quite interesting. But there's been several that have joined the caravan and left the caravan at the little way stations along the way. Too bad Mr. Masturbator has not left. <laughs> so introduce ourselves to the lady. Oh, when we can, yes. But we're preparing to debark now. Okay, well, I guess I'll run back to my caravan. Well, it's all one caravan, but you mean you're wagon, yes, yes. Yes. Just thought I'd let you guys know. Thank you again. All right. And Anything then, else you guys want to do in Daggerford, or else we will move out? 
Hey -o. Um I don't think there's anything. Um I would like Ereva would like to grab a small bag of apples. <laughs> All right. Yes. It'll probably cost just a like two silver or something. Okay, I'll just start no, like a, like a yeah, like a handful of copper. Okay, do you want me to just take off like uh, ten copper, eight copper, ten, ten copper? Ten? Got it. All I'll right. do that too. You said it was ten copper. Yeah. Give you five apples. Okay. And then there. I did my next thing. Yep, the apples are in your backpacks. All right, and so you are able to strike out from Daggerford. Um, I'll give an apple to uh Babe Horse? Is that what his name is again? Alright, as you attempt to walk forward towards Bade, he uh toward towards Bade and his horse, he actually uh uh says a, a uh, few words to the knight and the knight intercepts you. Puts his, his body in way between you in the wagon. Oh, I, I just have a apple for the horse. Knight, knight says, sorry, ma'am. What is... If I see this, I will, I will bark out to the knight that she's just trying to allow the horse to feed properly and keep it um, from diminishing its performance for the masturbator and thus allowing it to uh, continue on its path and uh, that way I won't have to beat the masturbator. The knight uh, hears you calling out and he just kind of puts his hands up like, what do you want me to do, man? He he, he says, I, I've got my orders. Pretend you don't see her. I can't look do at the other way. I cannot do that, sir. Surely you can. What if I accidentally disappear and appear next to the horse? I would not suggest that. I ride up and kind of, in, you know, engage him in conversation to distract him while she performs her little miracle of face step or whatever it is. Okay. You give him the apple. He uh he he looks at you, Hawkeye, and uh looks at um Bade. Bade is is watching very closely from uh from his wagon. And uh he looks to you, Hawkeye, and says, Here, give me the apple, I'll I'll try to give it to the horse when Bade, Bade isn't watching. Don't cry, man, do it. Feed the horse, treat it properly. Otherwise, I would just do it myself. Otherwise, I'll have to embarrass you. To Hawkeye, he says, yeah, but Bay doesn't want any of you near near him anymore, so. And what I'm doing, uh, what I'm, I'm hired to take his orders, so. I understand that. Really. But I commend you for following your orders. Thank you, sir. And then he uh, holds out his hand to, to grab the apple. I give him an apple. All right, he takes it and kind of puts it in, in one of his packs on the side of his own horse. And then bids you to be on your way. He says, all right, well, when there's a moment, I'll, I'll give it to the horse. Trust me. Hey, yo, babe. <laughs> 
Bade just and then I look scowls at you. Bade scowls at you and just <sighs> turns his head and then um, urges his horse on. I'm not gonna leave until I see that horse had an apple. <laughs> the night, so we... the night looks to you, Hawkeye, and he says, "Please, I don't want this to turn any any more dramatic than it needs to be. I'll give the horse the apple when I when I can. Just give it give it till nightfall at least." I walk up and Ereva walks up and kind of puts a hand on Hawkeye and he says. We should be careful that we don't make matters worse than they already are. He gave his word that the apple would get to the horse. I think that's all we can do for now. I scoff and, like, walk back. I give him a stern look, but nod and ride away. The night... I act... Go ahead. I was going to say, I actually will hand a second one to the knight and just say, make sure he's taking care of two knights in a row, please. He doesn't say anything, just nods his head curtly and turns to go back closer to the wagon, to his own wagon. Okay, so after um, a few hours of traveling, um, getting probably closer to uh, two or three in the afternoon or so. Um, there is a weird sight. Bait is feeding the horse. <laughs> <laughs> the horse is eating him. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. that horse is actually super fucking evil. You guys didn't catch it, but it's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Feeds on babies. It's actually the beholder. It's a beholder. Somebody polymorphed into a horse. We have right here. Um, pretend there's a wagon behind you guys, but okay. not an Ondar would notice first because the rest of the party is further along the wagon. There is a head poking out just above the ground, and everybody is um, kind of just passing along it, going around it, but otherwise paying the head no mind. Okay. There is a, hu a, a human head? <laughs> yeah, there's a, a human head. Um, he seems to be, uh, as you get closer, you notice he seems to be kind of parched with chapped lips and um, exposed for some time yet. It is a person Not. buried up to the neck. He Not is you. unconscious, but still alive. Uh, do you see this? Yeah, I didn't... I, it, there was a point in my life I thought I was born in a tree, but I don't think people are born out of the ground. Okay. <laughs> Why is stopping to... Uh, on our, you know, rides up and dismounts. And, All know, right. Approaches, approaches the head. So when you get closer, you actually see that the word Oathbreaker is painted on his forehead. Uh, Andar takes a foot and taps the... Is it a male or female head? From what you can tell, it is a male. Taps it on the cheek. Hello? His face moves a little bit from your prodding, but he does not wake. It's like a water skin and like kind of squirted a little bit. Right, make me a uh, medicine check. Ooh. You, you uh, take some of your water from your water skin and, and splash it on his face. It actually seems to have done the trick and, and he, uh, Wakes up with a with a low groan. Oh. His eyes um, are partially opened, um, seeming to be a little bit delirious. And he looks up to you. Um, it's 
specifically to you, Andar, because you have splashed him. Oh. I would say uh, well met, but I don't believe that this is a good circumstance for you. Uh, no, surely. I came here. here. Do you have the uh, coast way? I'm sorry, what was that? How came you here in the middle of the trade way? Oh. Please, do you have any food or water? This well, I just ordered you with water in the face. That was not. Uh... <laughs> uh, yes, I. I didn't come here with my own. I was put here. I kind of guessed that you don't look like you were buried by yourself. You have uh, Oathbreaker written on your forehead. You're being punished for something, apparently. Uh, yes. Uh, well, don't break an oath to the wrong woman. Ah, ha, ha, ha. See, it was her family that did this to me. I don't believe it is. It is well appropriate, but a woman spurned and all that. You've broken any laws? No, no laws. Just, just a well, promise. Then. Well then, I shall dig you out. Good oh. guy, Andar. Hey. Thank any, you, thank uh, you, sir. Is there any, the ground that he's buried in, is it tightly compacted or can I dig him out with a dagger or? Make me an investigation check. Uh, and at the <laughs> same, oof. At the same time, Edelry is walking up oh, and shit. she she regards the man and she, she looks to you on and she's like, Seriously, Sir Knight, your, your, your virtue is true, but this man has Oathbreaker on his forehead. Well, it appears he has broken a vow against probably a wife, I'm guessing. I look at him and go, yes, and, you, and a you, wife or, or and married? You just, and you just believe him? Yeah, I, I didn't want to bring it up until you got the shovel to do it, but... What exactly about Oathbreaker goes uh, with the whole idea that Tom and oaths matter? I I'm just bringing it up here. So, Tom speaks of laws. Right, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, if you think that his angry wife's brother buried him in the middle of a road that people are traveling on, it, it, that seems like unlikely. I do. I think that if you made a promise to me and you broke that promise and I got mad about it and buried you, you think that right? Uh, I think that would be a pretty substantial hole to dig to try to bury me in while also keeping me subdued while you buried me. But it, if my whole family did it, you don't think that would be possible? And Edelry speaks up to you, Noct. She says, yes. Anyone that went through this much trouble, marking him as a traitor and bearing him up to the neck, surely there's a good reason. Yeah, I mean, here's a better way when when your husband or whatever is cheating on you. You take him out in the woods, knock him out, and leave him for the wolves. Or you you could still do the burying thing, I guess, but you do it when nobody's going to find him because somebody like you is going to come along and just dig him up. Right. Which is why they did this. They punished him. This is public humiliation. I mean, they didn't want him to die. They wanted someone to come along. This is like public humiliation, tar and feathering. Um, I mean, for you, then you actually do tar and feather. They, they tar and feather people. In some places, <laughs> in other places, they do this. In some places, they hang people. They put them in stocks. I say stockades. They, yes, they throw old fruit and vegetables at people. They do things of different natures in different areas. I'm guessing this is a local thing. I don't know because we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, how far? Are you, by the way, are we from Daggerford Town? Daggerford, yeah. 
You are about uh, half a day's travel from Daggerford. What's your name, friend? My name? Yes, uh, your name. Carlin. Carlin? Carlin, yes. Where are you from, Carlin? Uh, from Daggerford. Right. Were you married or to be married? To be married. You broke the vow? You... I... Cad, yes. is that what it was? I broke off the engagement. Why? Uh, Found something fancier, more pretty? Please, please, sir. My throat is so parched. Yes, yes. Tell me why. Tell me why you broke off your vow. Uh, and, uh, I'll give you a drink. Just for, uh, just for reference, your investigation check, um, basically just reveals that um, the ground is pretty churned up from, from the wagons, and they all have... It's pretty easy to see that wagons have been um, going around <laughs> him for a, at least a few days. Okay. Um, Poor bastard. He, he sighs... Well, if you must know, feared that her father and brothers were all bandits and expected me to join them, so broke off the engagement and they have they have quite a temper as as you can see. Mm. So they put you out here in the middle of nowhere with the uh, oathbreaker written above your head under your yes. head. For all to see. All to see. Yes, wagons have been passing me for passing a few days. By. Not even not even sure how long. Right. Neither of you are going to help me dig this man out. Uh, now, now we've introduced the idea that bandits essentially buried him here in public to escape. Bandits who are well known to just take you out in the woods and put a knife in your face. And now, now we've introduced this wrinkle into the story. I just. It seems more plausible that this man actually did do something. I, I don't want to take the responsibility of, of just digging a man out and letting him on his way. Very well. All right, Andar, using your hands, it will definitely take you a while. I'm using my daggers. Okay, so dagger uh, s still. You you're digging daggers. You're, uh, you're churning up the ground with your daggers and, and uh, pulling out little bit by little bit. Right. Well, everybody Blair. else in the wagon is kind of uh, passing you by and, and, and giving right. you some uh, some very disapproving looks. Edelry herself just <sighs> rolling her eyes going back to her wagon. Freddy and company actually come up as the wagon is, is passing by. I read that wrong for a second. Thought that said Hawkeye will come on to Andar. <laughs> <laughs> she likes the side of your torn. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So now uh, Hawkeye, Ereva, and Freddy, you, you each see this curious sight a head in the ground with Andar on, on his knees using daggers to kind of turn up the ground, and he's. He's slowly digging the man up. Everybody else is just passing by. A lot of uh, caravan members are just um, passing by without notice and more, even more scoffing. What you doing there, pal? Oh, this poor soul has uh, been buried by a family that he has uh, aggrieved in a... Uh, matrimonial way. According to the story as he tells it, yes. As he tells it, he backed also, out. Also, the of family of bandits. Right. He says that he uh, uh, backed out of a marriage to a young lass and her family, who happened to be bandits in the area, uh, buried him here with his head above ground and the symbol above his on his forehead as a punishment for failing to follow through on his promise of marriage and you believe him 
I do. Like, I would say anything to get out of his circumstance. Well, if I think this was done to embarrass him or, or cause him public humiliation and shame. I continue digging. All right, so you're able to get probably um, down to his uh, elbows, which are at his sides. So he has a, a little bit more freedom to move and he's breathing a lot easier. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, kind sir. Anyone so, else helping to dig or no? Tell me about the uh, last yeah. you failed to. Uh... I was actually going to change into some like wild form, like wild shape form to help. If that makes sense. <laughs> Hawkeye turns into a groundhog or something. <laughs> starts starts <laughs> digging I mean, at the ground. I, mean, I, don't Over, yeah. the I don't know what one would be more helpful, the wolf or the bear. So you would be able to. Uh, those are the creatures with a challenge rating. You could also um, change into any like regular animal. They just wouldn't have like a challenge rating, so they're not listed. So you could do any of you could do like a wolf, panther, or whatever, or you could uh, do like a, a groundhog or uh, anything else that would like a critter that would be good at digging. Your choice. Um. Yeah, I'll do a bear, but without the challenge rating. Okay. And then I um, will well, dig. Well, a, a black bear time. would have the challenge rating. Uh oh, I'll just do it. Why not? Okay, so Hawkeye changes into a black. Bear. Oh shit! Man's head. Wonder right. how the. Uh... Uh, I, I, tried, I tried to nudge him out of the way and then like dig around. Andar will stand up and allow her to dig. All right. Hawkeye begins to dig, changing into a big black bear and uh, pawing at the ground. Um, whereas Andar was making good steady work, he is uh, definitely able to get a lot more dirt at once with her uh, with her powerful limbs. What did he say his name was? Arlen. It's on the sea itself. Oh. So, Carlin, tell me about this uh, last you failed to marry. Was she beautiful? Uh, yes, she was very beautiful. Blonde hair, blue eyes, soft skin, white as can be. Fine a figure? Uh, the finest. Childbearing hips. Well, certainly you look for that kind of thing when you're you're in the prospect of marriage. Don't think you could have taken her away from her instead of joining her banditry family. Uh, surely, uh, that's that's an idea. Can I roll insight to see if he's telling the truth? Go ahead. <laughs> Freddy, you get the sense that he is uh, fabricating some of this story. Thank God Freddy came. I, I don't have proficiency in that, so I just didn't feel like it was acceptable for me to just start questioning that, but God damn, I don't believe this guy at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I start asking more questions. Oh, uh... Okay, so do, do I have a specific part that I think he's he's fabricating on, or do I just have a general gist? Uh, you rolled more than five over his deception, so, uh, you think that he is pretty much fabricating the whole thing. Ah. Certain, uh, gestures he's making and, and, and the spacing seems like, uh, he's already, uh, thought this all up in his head is, and is kind of, uh, just repeating it. Right. So, Andar, hold on a second. Look, what, family did, what, what, what family did she, uh... 
come from? I not that yet. What, my family? Uh, yes, what family? Uh, the on the the end of us, of course. I'll take another insight there. All right, roll insight. No. Oh. That's flag. Oh my god. <laughs> He rolled a one. <laughs> so you got the yes, yes you got the worst lie ever. Yep. You actually got the same exact roll, so Ty goes to the runner. Um <clears throat> you do sense that that itself was a lie as well. Took him a little bit to think All of right. the name. And huh? Yeah, I'm sorry, what was that? Anderfels, huh? From from what town? Daggerford, just up the road there. As Hawkeye is still digging away. So, Hawkeye, uh, you might want to take a break from that. Something about his story doesn't quite add up. He gulps down the water from Ondar. Um, very, <laughs> like, uh, like he hasn't drank in, in, in a week or so. Oh, 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 thank you so much. Do you stop Hawkeye or what's going on? Did she leave? Or is she muted? I, I said I stopped before, like I stopped. Oh, okay. And then I'm putting her back on. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like Andar, Andar is beginning Andar is giving him some water and then all of a sudden the bear stops and starts packing some dirt back on him <sighs> yeah I heard what um I pretty much just start like I pretty much just start like I start interrogating him in ways that like I personally don't really know how but uh, I try to get him to trip up, uh, you know, change his story. Okay, I got you. Yeah, so uh, um, you're starting to like uh, cross-examine him, basically. Can I Not roll just one more thing there, something? Colin. <laughs> Doing the Columbo thing. I guess that was, that was a Columbo thing. thing. <laughs> one last thing. Let me, let me, let me ask you one last thing. <laughs> A bunch of old people <laughs> jokes today that are not landing. <laughs> can, can I got to try an investigation. <laughs> uh, investigation for what? Uh, to like, like catch him in his lies. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right, Freddy. So you're uh, you're trying to cross reference him. Um asked a few questions about him and, and uh, you know, a little bit. He will. Yes, so he, uh, he actually uh, is able to maintain his story pretty well. You, you have not been able to catch him in any, any sort of slip up. Gives the same story. He was placed here by um, the father and brothers of his beloved that he actually broke off the engagement for because he feared that the family was in band was was a bunch of bandits and that he would be dragged into it and he didn't want to become a bandit so he broke off the engagement this was his punishment all right well after a little while of questioning I say all right well Andar this guy clearly has thought about his story very, very well, but I think you've still been duped. Well, my friend, if you think he's lying to us, why were why, why do you think he was placed here to if the, if someone wanted to kill him, why didn't they just kill him? Obviously, it's not a trap or the trap would have been sprung because we've been distracted 
long time now. I think maybe like the best lies come from half truths. If I had to take a guess, he may have been a member of the of the uh, the bandit group and uh, decided to break their oath with them, betraying his brothers. But that's just a shot in the dark. So either way, he's turned his back on a life of evil or illegality and deserves to be set free. Yes. Or perhaps well, we should... in order for him to do that, he's going to have to admit that that's what happened then. Okay. Because like, you're not turning your back on it by other people assuming things. So okay. what do you say there, Carlon? Is he right? Carlon? Um, first off, Hawkeye, please roll me an Intimidate. By the way, if he changes the story, I'm not going to believe him the second time. <laughs> Right? Oh, now you're just lying to me. Now, had to now it's just a trap. Yeah, this is this is just a trap to see if he'll take the bait. All right, He's so kind of fucked either way, though, really. Hawkeye uh, gives a snarl at Carlin, but she seems to have uh, uh, taken some time in between wild shapes. Hasn't been a bear for a while, so it kind of comes out more. Like, nah. It's more when he's a poo than... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's Carlin's still well, kind of taken aback, like like he's um he's he's been dug up enough that his hands are his hands are freed and they're they're resting um above the the gr- the newly placed ground. Um, he still kind of gets taken aback, like oh what what? And uh, he's kind of confused, listening to your party's demeanor change suddenly into a uh, less trusting one. The rest of the caravan is just passing by still. Um, probably two more wagon lengths remain before you are actually outside of the caravan. Um, he, he responds like, what? Look, my friend, we need to get you either out of the ground or decide to leave you here to die. And, uh, the choice needs to be made rather quickly. So either you're, uh, someone who was buried up to your neck, uh, by a bandit crew or because you broke off a relationship or because you left them. Which is it? Quickly, decide. Make me a persuasion check. Or he was a part of the guard and broke his oath to the city. To the or part of some kind of, or part of some kind of temple and broke a vow. There's a lot mm-hmm. of oaths that get thrown around in these days. All right. So he, uh, he gives a long sigh and uh, kind of sinks into the hole. <sighs> I'll show you. Then he uh, takes one of his hands and weakly reaches inside of his uh, shirt pocket and takes something out, a, uh, a small piece of leather. So kind he, of... he reaches into his shirt pocket and all of us draw a weapon at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he uh, he takes out this uh, this leather this leather like badge thing and kind of places it on top of the ground. Anyone looking at it sees Would you just look at it? see a, uh, a, a badge, an icon, emblem, on top of a leather strip that is a uh, blue background with a crescent moon and a harp in set inside it of silver. Have we seen it before? One of you have. Ready. Mm. I think another half-elf showed it to him, didn't he? Yes. Yep. So, ah. So, you decided they weren't worth your time anymore, huh? What? No, no. One mission. Can't tell... I, sorry, I, I can't tell you the specifics, but I'm... I'm in the Harpers. What? I, mean, yeah, I, mean, you, on it. I saw a picture of a hop and made that connection now, Doc. Yeah, so, so you're, you're on it now. Yes. 
Based on that mission, you got like. Unfortunately, I've, I've been found out, and my own position has been compromised, and they, they left me for dead here. The least I can do is, is, is report on my findings to my, my cell leader, but as you can see, I'm kind of stuck. I'd appreciate if you dug me out. I, uh, I peel back, like, part of my vest and, uh, flash the pin real quick back at him and then, uh, go to dig him out. He has a look of, um, extreme relief covering his face. And he, uh, he actually, like, lies back on the ground as, as, as much as he's able to in his awkward position, his forehead resting on the ground. And he, uh, starts to laugh a little bit. <laughs> Tell me, what is your mission? Is and he, uh, he, he, he motions for you with his hand to come a little closer so that only you can. Unfortunately, I'm in the same position as you. Can't say. Uh, yes, but I can tell you, friend. Uh, I'm investigating this, this, this cult, a cult of the dragon. Have you heard of them? I. You see, I, I, uh, I've been tracking shipments of stolen loot northward, trying to gain bearings on, on its movements. Uh, they have found me out and uh, left me at, at, a, at a roadside inn where the merchants that were uh, uh, helping to cart their goods um, were, were uh, swayed and persuaded to do so. The cults themselves man manufactured a story that I was passing information about about the uh, about the merchants' goods and, and where to find them. As you can probably tell, they didn't like that. Though they were unwilling to kill me outright, as the cultists themselves said, they were willing to leave me in buried in the road to let Providence decide my fate. I was I was all unable to uh, persuade them otherwise, but here I am. Cultists have have gotten their way and, and have a have a few days travel ahead of me. I, uh, I was unable to get a, a whole lot of information, though I I gather they, that they are traveling to the region of Waterdeep and and the uh, the the regions north. The mirror of the dread of the dead men was was whispered. That's what I've heard as well. Perhaps you should be more cautious next time. Yes, this this cult is has a, a few more uh, more intelligent figures than than I had guessed. With this information. I will have to end our session for today. <gasps> dun, dun. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's backslash Cl E, Hawkeye. Cliffhanger. All right. So there we end with this Harper half dug out. Freddy now going in and helping. As the rest of you are kind of watching the, the caravan slowly start to, to trail away as you are uh, finishing to help this man leave the area. And we will end here. Cool. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, consistently showing up and, and being a part of this. I hope you enjoyed the session. A lot of uh, extra roleplay. I'm, I'm getting to uh, really enjoy these, these roleplaying sets. Well, we got to give Knox some fighting soon. <laughs> yeah. It's the only thing I'm good at. <laughs> no, <laughs> not a very multi-dimensional character. Oh, yeah, shit. That and not believing right that bandits dug a hole and buried a man in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I wasn't suggesting we 
kick his head in, by the way, just that he had to tell us the truth. I didn't believe it, but I wasn't going to say, like, well, let's stomp this man to death. <laughs> you know, how do you change the token into the wild chase? Yeah, that's, that's what I was kind of wondering about as well. Um, I'll get that figured out.